Hey, how's it going everybody? It's RC Maxwell here for the Back to 12 podcast. And in today's video, we'll discuss Emeli Yalahu officially signing to the Red Raiders. And well, it's a way too early bracketology, but there is a lot to discuss on ESPN's latest release of theirs and Joe Lenardi. But first, I just want to give a thank you to everyone. Um, yesterday, we officially hit 8K here on this channel. And, you know, I didn't really know how this was going to go when I first started this channel and then Lyle and I really started giving it a good go when it came to the podcast and me doing these daily videos, I really didn't know how this was going to go. And to see the outpouring love and support that y'all show me, the interaction y'all bring to this channel daily, um, it truly means a lot. So I wanted to start this video after we got to 8K by saying thank you, a sincere thank you. Um, it truly means a lot that Y'all would take your time out of your day to listen to my nonsense um, and my antics and everything like that. And just trying to keep y'all in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball. It truly means a lot. So in the sincerest thank you I can possibly give, just thank you. And if you want to join this Back to 12 squad that we've created, one of the most interacted and most engaged Texas Tech audience on the internet, not just on YouTube, Hit that subscribe button and stay in the know on Texas Tech all year long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, enough of me being sentimental and all that stuff. Y'all are here for the news, damn it. I know what y'all are here for, but let's get to it. All right, Texas Tech officially has signed Emeli Yalahu, the finish 6'8 forward who averaged 15.2 points, 7.6 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game last year at Western Reserve Academy up in Ohio. He also played for the Finnish under-18 national team where he helped them win bronze in Division B of FIFA under-18. And now, this is what Grant McCaslin had to say about Yalahu, who averaged 10.2 points, 5.4 rebounds, and 2 point or two assists per game, excuse me, in the FIFA under-18 tournament. McCaslin had this to say about Yalahu. We are really excited to add Emeli to our signing class, McCaslin said. He is an extremely skilled and has an intelligent feel for the game. We can't wait to get him here to Lubbock this summer. Now, Yalahu is the fourth overall player to commit to Texas Tech in the Grant McCaslin era. Of course, you've got Darion Washington, you've got Chance McMillan, and Warren Washington. And I said Darion Washington, it's Darion Williams. What am I doing here? Darion Williams, Chance McMillan, and Warren Washington, right? And so if you want to know more about Yalahu and what he brings to the table and what Texas Tech had to say about them in the press release, I've actually got the link to that down below so you can go over to their website and check it out. All right, let's talk about this way too early bracketology from ESPN. And let me get some things out of the way first. Scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you that Texas Tech men's basketball will make the NCAA tournament in year one of Grant McCaslin? Again, scale of 1 to 10, just give me a number. 1 being I'm not confident at all, RC, or 10, it's going to happen, RC. This is the dumbest question you've ever asked on this channel. Let me know in the comments below. It'll be the pinned comment. All right, before we go into that, right, I get it. It's a way too early bracketology. There's people out there saying, why does this matter, RC? There's um, no way this is going to end up being accurate, right? Well, true. Like, I agree with you 100%. But the reason I want to talk about it in the video is because I think it's interesting to see the national perspective of Texas Tech men's basketball and the overall Big 12 as it stands right now. And I'll also preface by saying this. Teams will look a little different. At the time of this recording, Kevin McCuller just announced he is returning to Kansas. Okay, so this is ever-changing, right, in terms of what these teams will look like. Texas Tech has two scholarships remaining. Hopefully, they can go out and add two impact players to their roster, right? But as it stands right now, this is how the national perspective of the Red Raiders in the Big 12 stands. Let's start with the conference overall. They have seven Big 12 teams making the tournament in this projection. Starting at the top, they've got Kansas, who is the number one overall seed. And then the rest, in no particular order, are West Virginia, Iowa State, Texas, TCU, Baylor, and Houston. The first four out categories, Texas Tech and Kansas State. The next four out is Oklahoma State. So in totality, 10 teams from the Big 12 
are in the tournament hunt or squarely in the tournament, at least this projection by ESPN, right? The thing that I found the most interesting was this, okay? The Big Ten and SEC actually had more teams in the tournament. They had eight each respectively. Um, I found that kind of surprising to say the least. Also seeing Kansas State fall that far um, out of the tournament, even though they lost some guys, still a little bit surprising to me. I'll say this about the Big 12 as a whole, right? It is yet again going to be a really, really good conference, right? The Big East could surpass it this year. The Big East is absolutely loaded this year, okay? Especially at the top, right? It could pass it. But I'll tell you right now, it is going to be a blow for blow type of fight when it comes down to who is the best conference in America this year. And if I had to bet my money on it, I mean, I'm going to pick the Big 12, right? I mean, you think about some of the teams in there. The Big East is really good, too. But the Big 12 has been the best basketball conference in America for what feels like a decade now. OK, and it's hard for me to see them get supplanted this year with the amount of talent and the talent that is coming in to this league in terms of obviously Houston being the main one on the basketball front. UCF, not too bad as well. Right. You think about that and BYU, hopefully they're a little bit better. And then Cincinnati as well. They're Cincinnati. They've had historically good success up there, but haven't been really much of anything the past few years. Right. I just think that's where this. This is that, right? This is going to end up being the Big East and the Big 12 in terms of who is the best conference in America. But what it means for Texas Tech, who again was on the first four out of this way too early bracketology projection by Joe Lenardi, who I had to put in the thumbnail of this. Hopefully that's a good photo of him. I, it, Joe, I'm sorry if it's not. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. All right. This is what I think about the Texas Tech side of it um, in terms of them being on the outside of the tournament. It's a new coach. It makes sense, right? Overhauled roster. It makes sense, right? Lost a couple of really solid slash good players. Mainly, I'm thinking of Jalen Tyson, right? Added guys in the portal that are going to have to make a significant leap in competition. And now we've seen that in the portal in the past where these guys come from lower level competition to Texas Tech and they don't make that jump. And now I'm saying this. I like Chance McMillan. I like Darion Williams, right? Like, I like those guys. But if we're looking at this without rose-colored glasses and not just looking at the best possible outcome, listen, they're making a significant jump in competition, right? Like, that's just the reality of it. I think they're going to be really solid players for Texas Tech, but let's not go out and think they're going to reach their absolute ceiling in year number one and have tech going just absolutely bonkers, right? Like we got to be realistic about it a little bit. And I think that's what they're doing here to have Texas tech on the first four out. When I listed all of those things, I actually thought was kind of generous, right? Like I think Texas tech has some talent, but damn it, they need to address the wing situation and potentially get another big, they need more talent on this team. And lucky for them, they have two spots to do it. Now, who do they end up with? Time will tell, right? But I do think that as it stands right now, I can get behind this logic in terms of all the things that stand in the way of Texas Tech. Now, Grant McCaslin's a good coach. I think he'll do a phenomenal job at Texas Tech, right? But as it stands right now, this bracket, bracketology projection for Texas Tech, it makes sense in my mind. Um, and again, I want to preface this. I think Texas Tech has a solid to okay roster right now. But there's no doubt that pieces need to be added. And again, lucky for them, they have two spots available to do that with two scholarships. And there's still plenty of talent in the transfer portal. And more will be added once guys withdraw from the NBA draft process and more grad transfers into the portal here late. All right. But you got to ask you one more time as again, Texas Tech listed as a first four team out, according to ESPN Bracketologist. Joe Lenardi. I want to hear from you guys, though. Scale of 1 to 10. How confident are you that Texas Tech will make the NCAA tournament in Grant McCaslin's first year? Scale of 1 to 10. 1 being no confidence at all. 10 being this is the dumbest question you've ever asked on this channel, RC. Once again, I am RC Maxfield thanking y'all for getting us to 8K. Y'all really truly don't know how much y'all mean to me in terms of y'all interacting, engaging with this channel. It's hope and a prayer, and y'all made it a reality. Thank y'all again. And if you want to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball, 
and football all year long, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and join the fastest growing Texas Tech community right here on YouTube. Of course, I'm talking about the Back to 12 podcast channel.